Ich kann mir einfach I just can't imagine how people could do that to one another. These young Germans, Christians, Jews and Muslims visited Auschwitz, where some of the worst atrocities of the Shoah took place. Millions of Jews were murdered here. Today, Auschwitz is a memorial where the victims are given a human face. To see the harm people can inflict when they have power is truly frightening. It was really intense. I need to process it all first. For us it's a kind of museum, but millions of people's fates lie behind it. I visited a concentration camp for the first time this summer, Buchenwald. I thought then that now I was prepared for Auschwitz. Auschwitz is much worse. These young people have come here voluntarily, on a trip organized by a German non-profit organization that works to bring people of different religions together. People who'd otherwise be unlikely to meet. To be honest, before I went on this trip, I hardly had any contact with Jewish people. I'd never got to know any Jews. Auschwitz I was the complex's first camp. 60,000 to 70,000 people perished here alone. When we first went in, it was like, wow, this is where it all happened. But when we entered the actual buildings and saw all these pictures, it was really emotional. At some point, it became so emotional that I couldn't process it anymore. You create images in your head and imagine what it was like, but these images are nothing in comparison. It was a thousand times worse. I came knowing that terrible things had happened here, and now I found out much more about it. What happened, where precisely? It's all explained in great detail. It was so overwhelming for me that I think I just switched off. I put up a kind of blockade to emotionally distance myself, which made me feel bad because I felt it was kind of inhumane not to feel anything, not to cry or feel sad, even though what happened was so dramatic. Auschwitz II, Birkenau. This was the largest German extermination camp, built after Auschwitz I became too small. The Nazis murdered some 1.1 million people here. Most were killed in the gas chambers with poisonous Zyklon B gas. Each day, hundreds of victims used these steps to enter the huge changing room, only to discover that the showers were actually a gas chamber in disguise. Some 900,000 people were gassed right after their arrival in Auschwitz. I thought I'd be crying the entire time, because I'm a pretty emotional person. But it wasn't even possible to cry, because the mood was so oppressive. You were so angry at the people who could do something like this. I think that when so many do something, people think, well, it can't be wrong. The victims were millions of individuals with millions of life stories. The Nazis robbed the inmates of everything personal, even their hair. I saw it briefly. First, we went into another room on the left, 
but on the right was that room with the glass panes and all the hair. I took a quick look and thought, no, I don't want to go in there. Especially the personal things, like the children's shoes and the prostheses and crutches. I found that really distressing. You've seen pictures of this online before, but it's something entirely different to see it in person. The Nazis recorded the names of their six million Jewish victims. They can all be seen at the Auschwitz-Birkenau State Museum. At first I thought there'd be just one name or a couple of names per page. But no, there wasn't a single free space. It was full of names. I looked for my family's last name, and there was a huge stack like this with our name. My family's last name is Baum, and I think there were five pages full of Baums. People don't realize that behind this name is a person who was enjoying life with his or her family not long before, and who never realized that something like this could happen. Some Jews didn't flee because they couldn't believe that something like this would ever happen. The group went to Krakow, a tourist magnet in southern Poland. Here, the young Germans of different faiths got to know one another, a further reason for this trip. A visit to the local synagogue made clear that this chapter in German history cannot be closed for good. It's something Germany must continue to own up to. Germany should recognize its culpability and never forget it. The participants also discuss international conflicts, particularly the Middle East and Israeli-Palestinian relations. When you see injustices happening, no matter who they're perpetrated by, even if the person is themselves a victim or the state is a victim, when it comes out that these people are in turn oppressing or torturing others, then you still need to ensure that justice prevails. It needs to be like with any other country. Europe must also keep an eye out that international law is upheld and criticize countries that don't. But of course no one should be burning Israeli flags, because Israel is a long sought after safe haven for Jews. Here, a Holocaust survivor spoke to the group. Stefania Wernick was born in November 1944 in the Auschwitz-Birkenau extermination camp. I'm the child that was born in hell. Mm -hmm. Stefania Wernick tells the visitors from Germany how her mother was pregnant when she arrived at the camp. She hid that fact during the sorting because she was afraid of being taken straight away to be killed. My mother and many other women came to the camp in a truck. On the ramp stood a German capo. She told them, you've come to a death camp. There's only one way out again, through the chimney. Not long afterwards, Stefania Wernick was born at the camp. The newborn drew the attention of the infamous Nazi doctor Josef Mengele, who conducted experiments on the inmates. Dr. Mengele regularly came with his assistant to take me for examinations. My mother says that afterwards it was almost impossible to calm me down. I don't know what they did to me there, what they gave me, what pseudo-research they performed on me. No one knows what they did, 
When the Soviet army liberated Auschwitz in January 1945, mother and child were finally safe. Stefania Vanik survived Auschwitz and now, at close to 77 years of age, has a big family of her own. We are rich in family. There are 33 of us. Ich habe das Gefühl, dass sehr viele Menschen. I feel that a lot of people, especially from my generation, are more open to other peoples, other religions, and are much more tolerant than the generations that came before us. I wish I could say that people have learned from history, but I doubt it. I don't think something like this could happen today. Und sie mögen ruhen an ihrer Lagerstätte in Frieden. Und sie mögen wieder erschehen zu ihrer Bestimmung am Ende der Tage. Amen. Amen. Shalom, be Ramah. Oh, yes, Shalom,